Greetings, survivors and friends. Shadow Frax here with your weekly, nay, monthly update, because, as you're no doubt well aware, the big monthly patch splashed down yesterday, and I'm here to tell you what made it in, what didn't make it in, and maybe some other stuff too. <clears throat> Gloves, first of all. New features that if you've been watching you'll know about anyway, but I'll just mention briefly again. We now have uncraftable smoke grenades. Get them for 10 scrap each down at the bandit camp, then lob them wherever you want to cause confusion for about 50 seconds. The amount of particles in the smoke's been lowered a lot too to help with performance. Pumpkins and corn now stack to 20. They don't have condition anymore, but you can only pick them when they're fully ripe, and they'll stay ripe for 48 hours before dying. Also, health over time takes longer now to convert to actual health. Repair bench shelves can now hold deployables such as pookies, fires, and even boxes. Plus, you can wedge a box under the barbecue as well. A recycler has made its way into the wheelhouse at the dredge in the bandit camp, and now only the person interacting with a recycler at the time can turn it on or off. Bandit guards don't take kindly to smoke grenades being thrown around, and sleepers will be summarily dispatched after about a 20 minute kip inside the camp. Plus, these chaps are better shots now and more reactive to things like explosions. Also, because somebody is guaranteed to take offense at virtually anything these days, and this has to be avoided at all costs for some strange reason, there's now an option in the menu to hide the contents of players' signs. Please note, though, this doesn't make the sign itself invisible. In addition to these changes, a number of deployables will decay a lot faster now when placed outside of building privilege, such as furnaces, water catchers, refineries, barricades, and benches, and this should help to keep Rust Island tidy. Duh. A lot of work with AI has been going on behind the scenes, and you'll notice the fruits of this labor if you trundle down to pay the scientists a visit in the military tunnels. Their sensory systems have been reworked to allow them to hear footsteps, explosions, and gunfire. They can think ahead when making decisions are better at using cover and have figured out how to use syringes and throw grenades. This behavior is limited to the tunnels right now, but should spread to the rest of the boys in blue in time. Animals also roam better now. They should stay within a radius of the area they spawned in and so shouldn't all end up milling around at the seaside. This month's dev blog was titled The Performance Update, though, so we should really talk about that now, as let's face it, that's pretty much all you chaps care about these days. Well, you can start lovingly stroking your potatoes and reassuring them now as the team have spent the last month concentrating heavily on performance and optimization. There's a lot to digest here, so I'd recommend reading it if you can read, but I'll do my best to summarize it for you. First of all, the Bandit Camp received a lot of optimizations. This included both art and code, LOD distances and culling on various foliage. Also, draw calls for swamp trees were halved. Talking of trees, as I mentioned last week, a new system to limit tree meshes has been introduced, and an option has been added to allow you to take advantage of this. This will force trees beyond the set limit to render as billboards, and can really help you out in the old dense forests, so have a fiddle and see how it goes for you. A lot of CPU performance bottlenecks were removed over the last few months, but now a new feature from Unity has been implemented. Graphics Jobs makes better use of multi-threading. The upshot is that Rust should now be utilizing your GPU a lot better and isn't CPU bound anymore on most hardware, so graphics settings should have more of an effect on frame rates. Garbage collection was improved in a number of areas, such as ambient sounds and image effects. Workshop skins are now all included in the main game install which means they no longer need to be downloaded on the fly, and a third iteration of prefab pooling was implemented this month. Not only is it more efficient for the garbage collector, but it takes effect much sooner to reduce frame drops. There were additional improvements to camera movement, an FPS issue caused by name tags was addressed, and a specialized renderer for imposters was written to maximize their performance. Terrain texture quality should now properly downscale in line with whichever settings you use, with obvious benefits for vegetable-based machines, and something else that might be worth turning off for you is occlusion culling, which at the moment isn't giving the advantages that it should do, so it's probably best to experiment here and see which setting works best for you. And lastly, graphics-wise, atmosphere and fog volumes are updated to be visible from the outside looking in, which means you can see the fog in the bandit camp from up to 500 meters. This obviously makes the transition much smoother than just Suddenly, fog. Well, that's what made it in this month, and some hopefully significant improvements to performance, but what was left out? Well, a lot of you I know were hoping for some Captain Phillips roleplay and wanted to see the cargo ship hove into view off the coast. Sadly, although all the artwork's finished, at the moment it would only work as a static monument due to some extra code being needed, as the plan is to have it circling the island, so the team have decided to hold back until this is done. The slot machine I showed you last week is still only at the artworks 
Stage 2, and the L96 and scope you're all craving is still awaiting implementation, I'm afraid, so you'll have to find some slightly closer range ways of having fun for the time being. But finally, it appears that three different types of glove are soon to slide onto the game, namely burlap, road sign, and tactical. They're all designed to take advantage of the new first-person clothing models, as you can see, and the team are knuckling down to get them added for the next patch, so rest assured, it won't be long until we can get our hands in them. Thanks for watching, you're up to date now hopefully. If you enjoyed the experience, please leave me a like, sub and comment, and join me over on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Discord and my Steam group, whichever floats your boat. You can also support me on Patreon and get some sweet perks. I shall catch you all soon of course, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio.